Well, I'll be double dog damned, my friends. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Yeah, I feel like we just talked about a variation of this story, didn't we? But in any case, this is a visionary director who is sparking brand new life into a story we all know and love. Which, unless you're living in a big gigantic tree trunk like Ewan McGregor in this movie, you should know the story. A father's wish magically brings a wooden boy to life in Italy, giving him a chance to care for the child. Now look, when I heard that we were getting two Pinocchio movies in one year, I was a little bit skeptical. Because this is a story that we have seen done to death over and over and over again. And it was the latest entry into the Disney saga of remakes of their classic animated films. And if you saw my review of that Disney Plus exclusive, I didn't have a lot of terrible things to say about it. I thought Tom Hanks was excellent in the movie. But yeah, if you really think about the ramifications of it and the way it ends, it's not really very good. And this goes for any remake or reboot in general. When you look at it from the surface level, when you go in to watch it, all you're thinking is, does this warrant an existence? Does it add anything new to the story? Does it put its own twist on it while still retaining the messages that the original story carries? And Guillermo del Toro's version of this little wooden boy not only exceeded those expectations, Oh boy, this is, I think, in my eyes, in my honest opinion, this is my favorite animated movie of 2022. Because not only did he add so many new elements while retaining the essence of what Pinocchio is all about, but man did he go dark. I could not imagine Disney's name being attached to this version of Pinocchio in the slightest. Because if you look at the remake that came out last fall, they certainly had its dark elements, but come on, this certainly felt like the more whimsical version of the story that we are all used to. Especially if you grew up with the movie from the 1940s, like I did. This time, Guillermo del Toro does not have a ceiling on where to go with the darkness. The shackles of darkness are completely off. We see death in this, there's themes of mortality that are discussed in this version. We see Pinocchio die multiple times with some very haunting music. Yeah, this is a Guillermo del Toro project, alright. Let's talk about this animation real quick, because man oh man, this is animation that I don't think I've ever seen before in movies, and I don't really think it's ever going to be replicated. A lot of people might very easily compare this to Leica Studios and what they're capable of with stop motion and everything like that, but Leica characters appear very claymation. It very much feels like all the characters in the movie, even the human characters, they all appear like wooden carved creations. The detail on Geppetto's beard just looks like something you would find in one of his workshops. And the attention to detail that Del Toro is bringing here, the atmosphere, Alexander Desplat's musical score hits all the right notes. And damn, I really, really enjoyed this. I, it feels to me like this is a version of Pinocchio that got everything just right. Right down to the casting. I loved Tom Hanks in Robert Zemeckis' version of this film. Here we get David Bradley, who some of you might remember from Game of Thrones as the anchor of the Red Wedding. And he is so warm and welcoming, but he can also be very rattled when he needs to be. Especially when you get into his backstory, which I don't want to dig too deep into spoilers or anything like that. But Geppetto in this movie also had a son who he lost at a very young age. And it's a very similar backstory to Tom Hanks' version of Geppetto, which is something I really, really appreciated about the remake if you saw that review. But here, it's given like the Up treatment. And everybody talks about the opening 10 minutes from Up, how all of that is basically Carl and Ellie's love story done in complete silence with just background music. And everybody always jokes that, yeah, you could just turn off Up right there and you'd probably be leaving very satisfied. Very much the same when it digs deep into Geppetto's backstory. And not only here, but towards the end of this film, had me in tears, honestly. <laughs> like, it was just, I couldn't believe it. Like, I had seen versions of this story many times before, like I said. But something about the way Guillermo del Toro delivers this, that's where it really gets you. And I thought David Bradley was fantastic in the film, as was Christoph Waltz, who plays this puppet master slash ringmaster, who is very much a villain in this. And man, this guy is such an abusive bastard. 
I love the updates they make with all of these characters. I love Tilda Swinton as this wise magical fairy who, yes, is very much blue. I thought she was the perfect choice for this role. I thought Ron Perlman was an excellent choice as this fascist drill sergeant. Yeah, they get into fascism in this movie too. Benito Mussolini is actually a character. Like, what the hell? But I think what it all boils down to when it comes to the acting department is who they get to voice Pinocchio himself. Here they have Gregory Mann, who I feel like portrays this innocence about him perfectly. And a lot of people might complain that this actor was playing him a little bit too bratty. Because when he first comes to life, he's exuberant, he's rowdy, he is bouncing off the walls, just loving everything about being alive. Guess what, guys? Those are kids. Full of energy, full of life, just happy about every little possible simple thing, like hot cocoa. Pinocchio loves the hot chocolate in this movie, let me tell ya. And yeah, there's certainly very parallel elements to what Disney did in the 1940s with this story. Pinocchio does have a conscience, voiced by Ewan McGregor here. Who, by the way, just continues to prove why he's one of my favorite actors, because he is such a showman in this movie. And this is a scholar of a cricket this time around. He's an author. And I was loving what Ewan McGregor was doing with this character. His design, really, really cool as well. Guillermo del Toro brings just the right amount of quirk to these character designs to make them look wholly unique. And that, I think, might be the strongest adjective and trait to describe this version of Pinocchio. It's unique. It was really ballsy for Guillermo del Toro to put this movie out like it is, especially only three months after Disney just remade it. But he made it fully unique onto itself. The ideas that it brings forward about wishing and mortality and what have you, the changes that he makes to the original narrative from the 1940 movie, it all makes sense. And it never loses the essence of what the story is supposed to be either. Which is the really amazing thing about this movie, and I fully commend Guillermo del Toro for putting this out when he did, especially so soon after the remake, but oh man, yeah, this is easily one of my favorite animated movies of the year, if not the very best. The animation is absolutely beautiful, the darkness is certainly where I wanted it to be. The voice cast they got for it is top notch, but I do have one little nitpick with this movie and here I'm really really reaching. I had this same issue with the remake a few months ago, but the way Pinocchio's nose grows after he lies, which yeah, it certainly grows into a full ass freaking oak tree here, which is a freaking awesome idea, the more he lies the bigger this tree actually grows on his face. Kinda terrifying when you think about it that way. But one thing I didn't particularly like about Disney's remake here that they put out earlier this year, he uses his nose to lie and he uses it to his advantage. And that's not really a good lesson to be teaching children. Lying does not really equal advantage necessarily. Now for the most part, this movie is adamant about how lying is wrong and how you can see right through a liar. But there's also a sequence towards the third act where Pinocchio has to lie and he uses it to his advantage and I was like, damn it movie, you were so close. Granted, this is a very creative sequence and it was a very, very fun climax, all things considered. But I just can't overlook the fact that Pinocchio was lying to the advantage of his whole party in this case. Besides that, though, this is a movie that I highly recommend you guys stream on Netflix as soon as you possibly can. Can't really go wrong with a Guillermo del Toro movie. This is weird, this is outside-the-box thinking, and it's a fantastic reimagining of a fairy tale that we all know and love. I personally think this is the best version of Pinocchio we've gotten since 1940, when Disney first put it out in the public. I'm gonna give del Toro's Pinocchio an A. Absolutely outstanding movie, my friends. If this does not win Best Animated Feature at the Oscars, I will be extremely shocked. Because of the way it presents this material, I think it absolutely deserves it, my friends. But let me know what you thought of this version of Pinocchio down in the comment section below. Is this your favorite iteration of the story that we've gotten so far? Did you like the changes that Del Toro implemented? Let me know all down there in the nifty comment section below. And guys, I'm over here talking all things movies and entertainment on the regular. So if you're a new viewer, do consider becoming a subscriber and hit that notification bell because trust me, you do not want to miss another second of the discussion over here. Because it's really, really fun, this community we've created. And going into my third full year over here doing videos on YouTube, 
It's absolutely a joy to bring this discussion to you guys and to be able to talk movies with you guys having this window of opportunity. It's absolutely awesome. Do me a favor and smash the like button as well. This really, really helps this community continue to grow and gets these videos out there to more people. Stay tuned for more exciting videos hitting this channel very soon. 2022 has been a fantastic year in movies. I can't wait to bring you my top 20 movies of 2022. Along with my top 10 worst, which should be coming out around New Year's Eve. You guys have also voted on a retro holiday movie for me to discuss via my Twitter. I've still got a bunch of new releases to knock out before the new year actually hits. We're going to be looking at Avatar The Way of Water next week, along with Babylon and a couple of others sprinkled here and there. I'm also going to look to knock out my review of Titanic very, very soon to commemorate its 25th anniversary. Lots more to look forward to, my friends. Also, stay tuned for tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's going to be a live stream Spoiler City talking about the final projects in the MCU Phase 4. So guys, don't forget to subscribe because trust me. So guys, don't forget to subscribe because you do not want to miss another upload from me. It's getting really exciting over here, guys. Y'all are the best. Thank you all so much again for tuning in. And uh, with all that being said, back talk, commence.